It's time again for a Meet the Farmer video, so we're just going to bring you up to speed a little bit on what we're up to at the farm, and then we're going to take quite a bit of time this month to talk about some of the questions you guys have sent. You've sent some great questions in your letters, and we've really enjoyed reading them out here at the farm, and I really enjoyed the brochures that you homestead kids put together. Um, they're just awesome. You guys did a great job, and uh, my family and I have enjoyed them a lot, and we plan to share them with some other people as well. But uh, one of the questions that was asked last month, and that was a great question, was uh, do we set goals for ourselves out here at the farm? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, you guys, I know you set goals in school and you set goals for sports and, and you work hard to try to achieve them. And, and uh, that's exactly the same thing we do here at the farm. Um, winter time, of course, in between is after harvest and before spring planting. And so it's the time of the year where we sit back and we look at what happened over the last year and the trend of the last five years and see what we can do better here at the farm. We're thinking about what crops will be planted in what fields next year and then we make our budgets and decide you know what our goals are as far as how many bushels of corn we're going to try to raise on this field and and then we'll know how many inputs we're going to need to buy as far as how much fertilizer how much manure we'll be able to use how much seed and that type of thing. So a lot of planning and goal setting goes on this time of year and then the other thing we do is, as we said, as I said, we look back at our previous year's work. This particular book here has every dollar that we spend at the farm, and it categorizes it into whatever expense category we used it for. So if it was spent for fertilizer, or for seed, or for hired help, or for our personal household use, like household supplies, or clothes, or food, or what have you, it's all in this book. And we try to figure out, you know, where we can save some money, where we can cut some expenses, what dollars are being spent well, and did we get good value, and, and that type of stuff. So well, that was a great question, and it's very true here at the farm, just like it is for you guys in school, that there's a lot of goals and a lot of paperwork and a lot of math that gets done in the wintertime here to try to plan for the next year's crop and the next year's livestock. One of the questions that a lot of you guys asked on your letters in the last couple months was how many tractors we use out here at the farm. We've got nine tractors and uh, we've got five bigger tractors and four littler tractors. And the big tractors like this one here are used out in the field. This particular tractor we use on the planter in the spring <clears throat> and then we do some tillage work with it in the fall and then in the winter time we put our snowblower on it. And then we've got some smaller older tractors here like this old girl right here that are just used for work around the yard like for grinding feed or for running the feed wagon with the cattle or dragging the yard or raking hay or something like that. Some of the lighter duty jobs that don't take a ton of horsepower. When we get busy in the spring and in the fall we don't like to have to unhook from the feed wagon to go take a tractor to the field and so we've probably got as many tractors as we need but we feel like we use them all too. So. We use about nine of them. And another question that you guys had was how much fuel that we'll go through in a year. And uh, we look at it as how many gallons of fuel we use per acre because that's kind of our measure of efficiency. And at our farm we use about four and a half to five gallons of fuel per acre for the year. And that's to do the tillage work, plant the crop, spray it, combine it, and then do our fall tillage work, either disking or chisel plowing or something like that. So we're going to typically make five to six passes across the field, but a lot of the operations like planting, don't re the tractor is not working very hard, so it doesn't burn a lot of fuel. That was a couple of questions that got asked a lot, and so I just I wanted to answer those, but uh, that's what I was going to show you on the equipment today. Another question a lot of you guys asked and commented about was how much we feed the animals. And now since we're getting later into the winter, We've still got our cows grazing on the corn stalks, but they're not getting as much good out of them as they did when the weather was warmer, and they've kind of picked a lot of the good stuff over. So what we do as we get further into the winter is we'll take some of this nice high quality alfalfa, and then we've got a bunch of bales of corn stalks that we made in the fall, and we'll take those two products and we'll put them together in a grinder, and we'll get this product that we have over here. We'll put the alfalfa and the corn stalks through a machine called a tub grinder and it'll take them and it'll mix them together and so we've got some green hay in there and you can see the leaves and it smells real nice 
and then we've got the corn stalks in there also for roughage. And the cattle are able to digest the corn stalks, but they just don't have enough protein to really get them through the coldest weather. And so we start feeding them a little bit better. But the cattle really need about 28 pounds of feed a day. And, uh, you know, earlier in the fall we were just feeding them about 10 pounds of hay because they were still eating a lot of the corn stalks. But as the winter goes on and as the cows get later in their pregnancy, they need better groceries and they need more of them. And so right now, here we are in the middle, almost into January, and uh, so right now we're feeding them about 22 pounds of this alfalfa and corn stalk mixture, and then we put a little bit of shelled corn on top of it to give them some energy. So uh, that hopefully answers your question as far as feeding the cattle. As far as how much the pigs eat, a good rule of thumb is that a pig will eat about 3% of his body weight each day. So if you're working on fractions right now, that's 31 hundredths. And so, like this big husky guy right here, he probably weighs close to 200 pounds. So if he eats about 3% of his body weight each day, that means he's eating about 6 pounds of feed. So they're putting away a lot of groceries every day. But obviously as the pigs get bigger, they eat more because they can hold more in their stomachs. And uh, so their feed consumption just goes higher and higher and higher all the way from birth to market. Another question I just wanted to answer for you. Another question a lot of you guys asked last month was, what do we do when the pigs get sick? Well, we do some things to hopefully prevent them from getting sick, and that includes vaccinating them. Like, when you guys had shots when you were little babies, we do a lot of the same things with the little pigs. So we have a couple different shots that we'll give the babies in the nursery that will hopefully help prevent them from getting sick when they get older. However, if an animal does get sick, we have a couple options. We have some different antibiotics we can use to treat different things, but we have to be very careful because we don't want to contaminate the meat from the pigs. So a lot of these shots we can't give for the last month before the pigs go to market. We've also got the option of giving them like aspirin or ibuprofen in the water, kind of like we do as humans. And a lot of times it just takes a little something like that to get them over it. But uh, when the pigs get sick, it makes for a lot of extra work around here. So uh, we've been pretty lucky. We've had a pretty healthy winter so far. Winter time is also kind of fixed at time around here. We've got work that we're doing in the shop as far as getting some equipment ready to go for our spring and summer work. And like I told you earlier, we've got some work to do in our combine yet this winter. But we also always have work to do in the barns. We usually only have one week in these nursery buildings before we have to fill them up again. And so, we got pigs out of here last week and we got it all washed up and we're going to put pigs in this barn next Tuesday. But since we had a week of downtime, we went ahead and painted the building so we could brighten it up a little bit make it a little nicer place to work. And then of course, pigs love to play with things. So we have to go around and check all our gates and see if they need any welding. The pig feeders, a lot of times, the hogs will play with them. Like this one here has a bolt missing. and. Uh, so we have some work we got to do in here yet, but uh, we'll fill this barn up next Tuesday. So it's always a rush to get the pigs out, get the work done, and be ready for the next set. But hope you guys are all having a great winter, and uh, we'll talk to you again in a month. Thanks.